Yeah, hi Nadim. This is Michael Buckoff from Better TOEFL Scores, your online instructor. So let's take a look at your writing. And first of all, I just want to tell you thank you for your hard work. I know that you're working really hard on both your speaking and your writing, and you're definitely making a lot of improvements. All right, let's get started with the question. So it says, some people believe that university students should be required to attend classes. Others believe that going to classes should be optional for students. Which point of view do you agree with? Use specific details and examples in your answer. So I've taken what you wrote and I pasted it into Microsoft Word so I could kind of work on it a little bit. And I've highlighted uh, the the thesis and topic sentences of your different paragraphs. So let's take a look at the the topical organization of it first. So your thesis says, I believe that university classes should be compulsory for students because classes provide guidance and motivation. So you've focused around two key points. So let's take a look at your first topic. Since it's a compulsory class provides guidance to all students so they are ready for hard work in future. Uh, the next paragraph says interaction with other class members is another advantage for compulsory university classes that lead to students motivation. So, so far so good. So each topic sentence, the purpose of your topic sentences is to restate the key points you mentioned in, in your thesis. So that way each specific paragraph, it's very easy to unify uh, your ideas around that particular thing. Let's go to the conclusion. So we have these key points of guidance and motivation. In conclusion, compulsory university classes provide more opportunity to succeed in life because of training and competitive atmosphere in the class that cannot be substituted. Now, I haven't read the whole essay, but the conclusion might not be so good because it doesn't restate these two key ideas here. Unless you're trying to say that training is a type of guidance and competitive atmosphere is some type of motivation, I can see the connection maybe between training and guidance, but competitive atmosphere and motivation, I'm not sure. So I don't think that your conclusion exactly restates the key points that you, you wrote about. All right, let's go to the next paragraph. Now, if I need to make any changes, I'll make them as I go. And uh, then when we get done, we'll consider, in terms of your overall score, we'll take a look at how well you've organized your ideas. We'll take a look at the details that you've used to help support your general ideas. We'll take a look at your vocabulary, your grammar, your word choice, and those kinds of things. And, and then I'll give you a score uh, out of 5.0. I'll let you know where you would be right now based on the TOEFL IBT human ru rubrics. To be educated is important for all people. To support their family and compete with the society for, I'm going to put in this, a better life. Now, it's not a major problem, but because you have life, which is a single account now, and I would say a life. Some people might think that university classes should be optional because compulsory classes are, I'm going to say, are a waste, are a waste of time and rather unnecessary. Now, I think if you say waste of time, unnecessary, kind of means the same thing. So you're a little bit redundant. So I'm going to get rid of uh, unnecessary and just say, or a waste of time. I believe that, I think that these two ideas, you have two different simple sentences here. I'm going to give you although here, and that way, you have your dependent clause, which is your support idea, and not the position that you take. So your main idea comes after that. I believe that university classes should be compulsory for all students because classes provide guidance and motivation. I'm going to use the word these, and that helps connect back to what you said in the beginning there. Next paragraph. A compulsory class provides guidance to all students so they're ready for hard work in the future. 
Teachers in the university are very well equipped. I'm going to put a hyphen here. Trained. They're very well equipped, trained, and... Having degree, I'm going to say educated. You need, I think you have equipped, trained, and I think an ED adjective there would work better. And educated, and then we might say according to maybe. So let's take a look at our grammar again. Well equipped, trained, and educated according to their respective subjects. So, I'm going to change this to which. Which can't be substituted by books. Their guidance constitutes a key factor in, let's say, students. Success. I think you don't want God get here. They get high salaries from the universities. I don't think you need to capitalize this because you're not referring to a specific name, just universities in general. So they get high salaries from the universities because they are highly qualified and if we will not attend classes, let's put a comma here, we cannot understand these subjects very well. We have to go for tuition privately by paying separate fees. You need to make up how about to enhance learning cons uh, Consequently, maybe. This is kind of trying to explain the cause effect. So you're saying that uh, to enhance learning means if, if, if you if you don't attend class, that you're not going to understand what's going on. So to enhance learning consequently, we will have to go. You got your word order a little bit wrong. I think you want to say private tutoring. We will have to go to private tutoring by paying separate fees, which may vary from five hundred to a thousand dollars per month this is good this is a specific detail to help illustrate why it is important to attend class you're basically saying that if you don't attend class you're gonna to have to pay more money in the long run anyway through the private tutoring for example if I will not attend the English class in the university I cannot master the English reading writing and speaking skills Period here. Separate this. You begin a new sentence. To master all these skills, I need guidance from the teacher, or I will need separate coaching for English by paying extra or separate fees. Pretty good. You, 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 you know, I've, I've made a few grammar corrections in there, but overall, it's a very strongly supported paragraph. There's adequate supporting detail, which goes back to the general ideas you're making in the beginning of the paragraph. Your topic sentence connects back to one of the key points in your thesis. There's depth. It looks like you've thought through the subject a little bit. You sound pretty serious. Okay, let's go to the next paragraph. Interaction with other other class students is another advantage for a compulsory university classes that lead to students uh, motivation the, the problem is it's not just compulsory classes but for compulsory 
attendance. Two, if I put that in there, it makes your topic sentence, it connects it better to the purpose of the question. Remember that the question is, what point of view do you agree with? Do you think that people should be required to attend class, right? So I'm, I'm using that word attend in there and probably maybe even in the going back to the other um, topic since you might say making attendance compulsory there and that even connects that a little bit better making attendance compulsory provides guidance here interaction with other class students is another advantage for compulsory attendance to university classes that leads I'm going to say leads here interaction is an advantage that leads to students motivation when we are attending university classes you already said when so you don't have to say then there so when we are attending university classes we'll listen and share ideas with other students that lead the competitive atmosphere in the class so every student s tries to work hard and will be motivated like my friend nice you give a specific name of somebody you're making the writing personal so the TOEFL IBT human raters I mean you're actually giving a face behind the writing very good this is very strong you do a good job with your specific examples it makes your essay very very strong you have like my friend Amjad you need to say who that way you remember this idea here is not the main part of the sentence your main part of your sentence is I tried right so by using who we turn this into um, uh, what's called an adjective clause here like my friend Amjad who did word order problems who always did his best in biology I tried to beat him no comma here and got good scores now you want to see some advanced writing here you're having a few problems with this in your essay. You're having some problems with what I call run-ons. You're not sure when one sentence ends and a new sentence begins. That's a problem, right? So you say I and then tried, which is a subject and a verb. But then you say this and then was. So the main thing here is you can't, you can't put two different independent clauses together with a comma. That is a comma splice. You need to show the IBT human writers that you understand basic sentence structure. But if I get rid of this verb and then this second idea kind of becomes a modifying phrase and I just say this all because of competitive atmosphere in the class and then that this is no longer uh, an independent clause, this idea here, it becomes a phrase and that way you avoid the comma splice. Let's read it again, make sure I, I have the grammar right. So like my friend Amjad, actually I should put a comma after Amjad because uh, the adjective clause after is not really necessary to identify him. Uh, like my friend Amjad who always did his best in biology, I tried to beat him and got good scores. This all because of the competitive atmosphere in the class. This happened not only between the two of us I'm looking at your parallel structure problems here. This is what's probably killing you here. If you have not only, 
you want to use but also. If you use either, you want to use or. If you have neither, you want to use nor. So I see not only here, but I do not see but also anywhere else in the sentence. So let's see what you're trying to say here. This happened not only between the two of us, and then you might say, but rather... but rather with our class you might say but rather with our entire class maybe this you got some major grammar problems here I'm, I'm being honest with you it's, I'm having trouble trying to figure it out myself then maybe change this So then we say, this happened not only between the two of us, but rather with our entire class, which is the best class in the whole university. Only because... The teacher, students, and student... The teacher, students, and student maybe student motivation was a crucial step in this progress process maybe I think you got the wrong word there last year the student of the year past tense right last year if you use a word like last year next year by 1980, in 1980, these are all prepositional phrases, but they're very, very important because they signal uh, certain time frames. So once you say last year, it forces you to use past tense in the rest of the sentence there. Last year, the student of the year was from our class only. You're using because a lot, let's say due to. So that we're not saying because all the time. Last year, the student of the year was from our class due to the motivation we got. You already said class, so I don't think you have to say in class again. Okay, so in conclusion, compulsory university classes provide more opportunity to succeed because of training and competitive atmosphere in the class that cannot be substituted. And as I pointed out, you might say this, and as I pointed out, attendance should be important because students get valuable guidance and then they're also highly motivated to achieve success. So if you say something like that additionally at the end, it will better, I think, connect your introduction to the rest of the um, uh, essay. In terms of scoring your essay, Nadim, I think the question is, will you score a four or a five? So that's kind of what I want to try to, to figure out right now. So I'm looking directly at the TOEFL IBT test independent writing rubrics the scoring standard. So let's start with a score of five. An essay at this level largely accomplishes all the following. You have uh, effectively addresses a topic and task. Yes. Is well organized and well developed. Using clearly appropriate explanations, exemplifications, and or details. Yes displays unity, progression, and coherence. Yes and no, the conclusion doesn't connect back to the developmental paragraphs in the introduction as good as it should, but definitely the 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 other aspects of the essay do. So maybe some of the IBT human raters, they're probably going to look at this and probably look at your, your conclusion Ah, uh, you know, maybe you didn't do so well there. Let's go to the next one. 
displays consistent facility in the use of language demonstrating syntactic variety, appropriate word choice, and idiomasticity, though it may have minor lexical or grammatical errors. I'm going to say no. Uh, in terms of using the language, um, I think idiomasticity is pretty good, though. It means that when you're writing, it's, it's natural. It, to me, you don't sound very odd. You have a pretty good vocabulary. I like the kinds of words you're using. It's very easy to understand what you're saying. But you do have a few problems, especially in combining your sentences. And sometimes you have chances where you can combine a sentence when you don't. In other cases, you'll put two sentences together that actually are separate independent clauses that you can't do that. So, I think probably because of the coherence, which goes back to that conclusion that you wrote, and I think because there are a few errors, you kind of watch me correct them, I think probably you would not score five out of five on this particular essay. So let's go to four. Addresses the topic and task well, though some points may not be fully elaborated. No, everything's very elaborated. You do a good job with that. Uh, is generally well organized and well developed. Yes, except for the conclusion. Uh, displays unity, progression, and coherence, though it may contain occasional redundancy, digression, or unclear sentences. Um, you were redundant once or twice in there, but that was not a ma major problem. But I think here, um, you will probably have occasional noticeable minor errors in structure, word form, or use of idiomatic language that do not interfere with meaning. Yes, uh, this is really the reason I'm going to score you uh, four. But you know what? I, I think some people might disagree with me, so I'm going to say 4.5 out of 5. You definitely have a really good essay. You, you have some errors in there, but the errors do not interfere with the meaning of your ideas, so it's possible that you know one reader might give you a five and another reader might give you a four which ends up giving you a 4.5 out of five which would definitely be a really good score that would run you right around 25 26 points out of 30 so anyway thank you for submitting the essay and this is michael buckoff of the seven step system to pass the toefl test and nadim you got some good writing skills so keep it up